So, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, terima kasih teman-teman semua yang sudah support selama ini untuk hari ini kita akan uh, masuk ke bagikan yang keempat. Ini mungkin uh, malam ya di, di Indonesia, jadi wajar bila sekitar jam 8 mungkin, 8 p.m. in Indonesian time. So, so not so much people will be wake up. <laughs> So, but you can watch, uh, rewatch again all the video in in the Facebooks. So today uh, we got the friends uh, from Jamaica. So Danny Nembran. So Danny Nem, I know Danny Nembran back to 2015 when I when I pursue my uh, master degree in James Cook University. So that's why I use uh, James Cook University shirt today. So it's pretty. Ah, uh, what you call? At the first time, I I think Danny is like snob guy, so you know it's like the famous famous gang in the in the university. But when when I took the what you call the field trip to RPS Island, so it's not at all. So he's very friendly, he's very chatty. So here we go. Hey Danny. Hi. Hi, Hi Adika. What's up? <laughs> oh, good. How are you? Uh, I'm hanging in there. It's early, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it must be very early for you. So it's quite challenging to set up the the a proper time today because yeah, yeah it's, it will be like 12 hour different between Jamaica wow. and Indonesia. So so it's 8 p.m. today uh, at the same time in Indonesia. So probably yeah, they still... prepare to sleep. <laughs> Oh, we just be eating dinner here in Jamaica about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, uh, probably uh, that you some people you don't don't know about Jamaica. Do you know? Uh, could you explain uh, where is Jamaica and and how how is it like the locations, the weather, the the culture probably? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so Jamaica, we are um, a fairly tiny island in the Caribbean. We're only just about under 11,000 square meters. Um, we're the largest English speaking um, island in the Caribbean. So we have that going for us. Um, just like any other tropical island, we're warm mm -hmm. all of the year, but in the summertime, it gets really, really hot. So we're entering into the summer um, now. Uh, most people would know Jamaica for, you know, Usain Bolt, Shelly yeah. and Fraser Price, Fast Runners, Bob Marley, reggae music, nice ah, yeah, reggae. And reggae music, <laughs> White Sand Beaches. It's a very mm -hmm. popular tourist destination. Our North Coast has a lot of um, hotels. The weather is pretty calm most of the year. So, you know, people come here all throughout the year, even though the tourist season is pretty much let's say November to about March, which is the winter in in temperate countries. So yeah. Yeah. So when 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 I look at the map that's Jamaica is like a, an an island, isn't it? Like the like like being a being a fans of the Caribbean Sea, which is which is also well known for the shark shark conservation area is yeah. Caribbean Sea. So it's very yeah. well known. Yeah, so we're just below uh, Florida. Uh, Cuba is our neighbor to the north. And then we have like Haiti, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico. Um, that's the greater uh -huh. Antilles. And then you have the Eastern Caribbean that has like Trinidad, Dom um, Dominica, uh -huh. St. Lucia. So this, they're a bit smaller than we are. Uh -huh. So so in terms of like um, the ocean, it must be very important for Jamaica because it's like an island. <laughs> So how many islands? So this is like only one main island or is there any surrounded small island? Yeah, we do have, uh, we're an archipelago. So I think we have, I think it's 60 something small mm -hmm. islands and keys around them. None as big as the mainland, yeah. but um, we do have a few and they're inhabited in, in many cases. So we have the Pedro Keys, that's to the south um mm -hmm. of the main island where we have a fishing community we have the Marant mm -hmm. keys which is to the east similarly yeah. fishing community mm -hmm. um and so yes the ocean really is it plays a, a really big role in our culture or recreation uh even here in uh, kingston and saint catherine which are two of the bigger or most populated parishes in yeah. jamaica um we have a beach called helsha 
uh, where you can go and eat fried fish and festival, which is like a sweet um, fried bread. Uh, you eat it in front of the ocean, you chill out with your friends and your family, you have a red striped bear, you listen to reggae music on a uh. Sunday. So, you know, even though it, it, the beach and the ocean, the, just the whole coast really forms a big part of our Jamaican culture and heritage. So, so it's, there's no, no wonder why you, you like, uh, you like play with the ocean, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, man. So from I was a child, um, the beach, as I said, formed a big part of my, my childhood. We would go every weekend when we could. We would, you know, for summer holidays, again, you have to go to the beach for your summer holidays, spend time on the North Coast. And I just learned to love the ocean, not even from a scientific perspective, just because yeah. I really enjoy being yeah. near the sea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so that's very interesting for you, like uh, for, for me, especially when, when I read your story. So you have been like spent nine years mm -hmm. so in, in telecommunications company before before take a turn, like very significant turn into the mm -hmm. environmental studies. So I guess like in the, in the time of nine years, you should probably like being the, the manager is like certain level like so yeah, you, you lose your 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 career like like more the settle more your comfort zone. So how how you how you can decide that? <laughs> you know the funny thing is I I, I mean I think everything kind of happens for a reason and and sometimes you make choices that to the outside world they don't seem like it makes any sense but to you it kind of just feels like you're making the right decision when you make the decision everything just kind of starts clicking into place so when i actually started i graduated with science a science degree i had a double major mm -hmm. in zoology and botany and i okay. the whole reason that i started my job in telecommunications was to earn enough money to go back to school to get my master's degree in, ah. in science so oh. what happened was that i just started as you say getting promoted i started to travel mm -hmm. and different countries you know i lived in central america in el salvador and panama and honduras yeah. um so i i kind of got i was learning so much and traveling so much that i was like why would i ever leave this job but <laughs> somehow it just felt a little like something was missing like i was cheating myself because i actually came here for one purpose and then when the travel and the money started and the promotion and you know you yeah. get caught up and you, you i lost sight of why i really started and so i started to feel very restless and like i didn't have a real purpose um and so yeah i did it i said let me just i actually was going to do an mba and i went as far as to visit <laughs> the, the MBA campus MBA is quite different <laughs> <laughs> yeah listen very different i went as far i visited the campus i sat in some classes and i was like yeah oh god this is not me and i applied to james cook and i actually thought that they weren't going to accept me and then i yeah i saw the acceptance and i was like if i get accepted i'm gonna quit and i quit and i moved to australia and yeah. it was pretty much one of the best decisions i've ever made ever yeah so and so you should be like have more more experience more knowledge on being telecommunication more on management management things mm -hmm. and why you decided like marine science so it's like unfeasible uh, it's like untouchable so it's like living underwater so it's very like um what you call very high uncertainty all the weather so yeah totally like different with the with the very. management or industry well you know um i always had this desire to marry my world so when i worked in telecommunications i did learn a lot of project management skills time mm -hmm. management skills and I, I i also love as i said i love the ocean yeah. um and in my experiences living in jamaica i came to understand just like we were discussing earlier how important the sea is to everyone not just fisher folk in jamaica but the whole jamaican society and we all interact with this common resource yep. so differently and so i thought that okay if i can learn more about marine science and apply my project management skills and i'd be in a position to kind of be that intersection between 
people and the environment so I could manage, you know, or, or inform decision makers on some of the better ways to manage this common resource for the good of of everyone. And so I thought, well, if I'm going to do marine science, I'm going to go to like the best place you can go, which is the Great Barrier Reef. Like, yes. uh, I mean, uh, go big or go home. That was basically what I was aiming for. And so I, I just figured, yeah, this is the right decision. I could network with the right people, you know, and then we could form those networks across the oceans and it has happened. And it's, it's, I'm happy. <laughs> Yeah, it's very interesting. So, but I just I just thought that actually management and marine science have like similar things. So you need to manage the people, isn't it? Yep. So you manage the people. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That was my thought process. I thought, yeah, how we need to manage the users of this resource. So the ocean will do what the ocean does. It will yeah. It's fine on its, it's own. Like, yeah, that's their business. Doing their business. Yep. Yeah, so that was exactly my thinking. Mm. Uh, so we have a couple of friends join us. Like, so it's Bang Begin. So Mr. Begin is the lectures in marine science in Bogor. So it's also he also one of my lecture, and also Seha is from Cambodia. So oh. hi Seha, I'm Mr. Begin, and all <laughs> my college. So, so, so what? So what are you doing at the moment? Right. After so you graduated from James Cook and then back to Jamaica. Yeah. So when I left James Cook, I actually did a six month research project in the Philippines. Yeah. Um, so I went to I think it was about 14 different remote islands to including like Apo Island, which was. Oh, yeah. Apo. <laughs> it's very famous when Gary Gary. So. So exactly. Gary is our, our lectures in fisheries management. So right. He's, he's mentioned Apo Island several times. So can you imagine, like, after hearing about Apo Island so many times and then actually going there to dive and do yeah. scientific research, I was like, oh, wow, this is crazy. So after I uh, did my six months in, in the Philippines, I moved back to Jamaica. And actually, I wasn't even able to find a job because I had not lived in the country for so long. I didn't know anybody. So mm -hmm. after being unemployed for way too long, I just put my resume on Twitter. I was like, hey, <laughs> Jamaica, hire me. And someone saw it. And I got employed to the company that I work with I now. <laughs> So anytime you feel like you need to get your message out there, just go on Twitter, <laughs> post it, and you uh, might get a response. Um, so I work for a company in Jamaica called Environmental Solutions Limited. We're based in the capital city of Kingston. Mm -hmm. um, and we, it's in the name, we provide environmental solutions. So we provide people with tools and recommendations to manage their developments and properties in a more sustainable way. So sustainable development for us is really the ultimate goal. Um, we see the environment as, uh, again, a common resource, and it's not just the natural environment, it's the built environment and how people interact with it. So we are really trying to provide the tools to manage all of that uh, sustainably. So I work in impact assessments, I do data collection and data analysis, I do project management, budget management. Um, sometimes I have to do policy reviews and legislative yeah. reviews. I get to sit and meet with a whole lot of different types mm -hmm. of stakeholders, government, private sector, individual community members. It's really, it's kind of like a different job every day. It's very yeah. exciting. You must be have a lot of story as well, isn't it? From oh the gosh listen it's like, so, like looking like compromise things like from the from the like the consumer perspective or from the government perspective exactly it's much or even yeah. from the conservationists like far left far left conservationists so there's also things like that isn't it mm -hmm. there are people who say listen the environment is there don't watch it don't yeah. even put a piece of board there yeah and then you have other people who are like, tear it all down, burn it, flatten it, build the hotel. So we yeah. try to get them both in the same room to actually yeah. have meaningful discussions about development. Yeah, it must be very like, it must be like very hard to find the compromise because the Jamaica will be rely on the on the tourism as their attractiveness. 
but the attractiveness is the ocean, isn't it? So you need to make sure that the ocean will be healthy enough yeah. so it's attract the, the tourism. And it's, it's very difficult even on a personal level as well because there are some projects where I feel like they could do something a different way, but at the end of the day, it's not my decision. I'm there to guide these people. And so I have had sleepless nights every now and again, but luckily it's been nothing too severe at the end of the day. Yeah. So moving to a little bit serious thing. So like uh, in the couples like last month, so we really like being shocked that the racism is like really real. Like even you, you can still see in the commercial, commercial breaks. So it's very, 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 very real problem. It's just like being the, what you call the ice, a uh, mountain ice uh, problem. So it's very really good. Uh, deeper in in the in the bottom of the sea, so some some people thinking also like my 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 supervisor actually said like marine things is too white like marines too white because not so many color or so many expert that working on on the marine thing. So what do you do you think about it? Listen, I have a lot of thoughts on this topic. A lot. Uh, <laughs> your supervisor yeah. is right. Not only marine science is too white, science in general is just white and the statistics, they don't really lie. I mean, there's a lot of data available, especially coming out of the United States that shows like 2% of uh, minorities are, you know, graduating with PhDs in general, much less in STEM. Um, mm -hmm. When you look at marine science, again, the numbers are incredibly low. And so, yeah, I, I get that people are now coming to grips in this very obvious way with the fact that not just the world has this ambiguous thing is not fair and not just, and there's a lot of inequity, but in every facet, in science, in business, in livelihoods, in economies, it's not fair. And these, there, there's this current of inequity and injustice that is yeah. oppressing a lot of people. And it doesn't just apply again in vague terms, right? Mm -hmm. So just like with the, the climate march that we saw where young people were just fed up because generations past have not managed these environmental resources yeah. in a responsible way. And now yeah. they paid the price and they went on strike. Yes. Black people in America, around the world, minorities, people of color, everybody that's not white has come to realize that in some way or another they have experienced oppression and it has affected their livelihood and their life and their mental well-being and so they're fed up and they're striking and i fully support it yeah yeah so that's that's one also like this this event also one of like try to to support those things so do, do you think is is the the matter of the education or because um like like education doesn't what doesn't put like the environment thing as the sexiest topic <laughs> you know? like, oh, yeah. you, like back to my home country it's also like stereotypical like oh you need to be like the engineer you need to be the lawyer so that's the best thing the for you to be yep. a medical doctor that's oh yes that's good, <laughs> yeah you know um it might be that i i think like my goal now is kind of like you where we're trying to make things more visible. So people become more familiar and comfortable with the idea of science, with the idea of different people in science. So we have Asians in science, we have Caribbean people in science, we have Africans in science. We don't just have white people in white lab coats, uh, in white laboratories handling test tubes. That's not just science, right? It's everywhere and every facet. So I think there's been a major shift um, in that people like you are just doing these wonderful initiatives where they're bringing it to the people. Um, yes, education is a part of it. Um, it's not a sexy topic. Well, I think it's sexy, right? <laughs> but, um, you know, if, if we bring it to people in a way where they understand that it's not about leaving environments untouched, it's just about managing responsibility. If we talk about, um, the history of colonization and how you have people who have come in and literally 
destroyed acres and yeah. acres and acres of, of environments and it's still happening you know and it's affecting vulnerable groups and minority groups and, and poor people who, who have traditionally managed these environments really well so I think if yeah we can educate people on those things and it will garner more interest over time for sure so it's not so based on your experience it's not also the matter the matter of education so it's also the, about the opportunity like like you explained before like if you, after you get that uh, qualification as the marine science you back to jamaica and got nothing so is it also maybe it's also uh linear with the yogi question so hi denny it is interesting story about your career so he's uh he asking about so it's how hard you 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 get the job uh, as a researcher back to to Jamaica because you after you're doing some many experience but get nothing back to Jamaica. It was not easy to get a job in Jamaica. Um, the truth is, I think if you don't have a, a network of people that you're familiar with or that know you or know what you do, then you could be the best scientist out there but only you know that. And so a big part of what I had to do was just put myself out there, volunteer, yeah. do things like this, talk to people, just be visible, be in the space, get to know people. And eventually, you know, the quality of your work will speak for itself or, you know, people will just feel more comfortable knowing you. So science, any profession really is not just about the qualification. You have to mm -hmm. have to network with people it's a i hate the word but you have to do it yeah that's true <laughs> so thanks for the yeah. question by the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so 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 do you do you think that's all the even even if there is the job opportunity around the world there so do you think there's still inequalities like i don't know how it's is it color or non-color people? So how I, I said it's a little bit tricky for me to oh, say. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, people of color, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And white. <laughs> Those are the two categories. So is there any inequality like job uh, that they posted or they record that, oh, it's just for, for certain white people. So this is the job that's certain for the people with color? Um, nothing so overt. It wouldn't be yeah. as blatant or as obvious as that. Um, for example, my experience has been like, you know, um, scholarship opportunities or job opportunities. Countries will generally tend to want to hire from their own countries right? because of funding issues and other things. So that's been my experience personally. You still there, Andika? Because you froze. Or is it my internet? Hello? Uh, I don't know. Let me know if you can still hear me because I'm not sure if it's my thing or your thing. I'm going to send a message in the chat because I don't know. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah, the whole thing has frozen. Okay, I'm just gonna hang out here and keep talking just, oh, and Dika just left. So I'm gonna keep talking because uh, he might rejoin. I'm not sure if he's not here, if anybody will still hear me. Um, let me check my internet connection real quick just to make sure that I am connected. Google. Yes, I am. Okay, so what I was saying was that um, there, it's not going to be overt racism. They have what's called coverts or microaggressions where depending on where you live, where you're from, um, maybe sometimes even your name, people will make judgments about your capabilities and so use that as a, some basis to to omit your your application from a particular job or a particular research opportunity. Um, so I won't say that it's blanket. I won't say that it happens all the time. 
um, I will say that it does happen and that people are becoming more and more aware of it as time passes, which is a good thing for us because then we get conversations like these um, that, yes, sometimes are uncomfortable, but people learn um, about how their own actions can contribute to biases and what they may be experiencing themselves. Uh, I'm actually going to see if I should message Andika. Oh, what's happening? Oh, He's sorry, back. Derek. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry I'm for the technical mystery. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. After it has been like a common issue after this lockdown so all the internet is being unstable yeah same okay <laughs> I where we are now it's on the live <laughs> <laughs> mm. oh, man, that's funny so uh is it the <laughs> <laughs> so we were just talking about whether or not there's like racism equality of job uh opportunity. Yeah. Right, so I was just explaining that it exists, it's systemic, it's in the, the built way, the processes that you know make certain things happen. I mean, I'm not gonna claim to be an expert on it, but it's things yeah. I've experienced. So depending on where you're from, depending on your name, depending on your address, people yeah. will use those characteristics to make judgments about you. Yeah. And so like, okay, if they see Andika Prima and they see John Smith, they're like, well, John must have gone to a really good university. <laughs> and, da, da, da. and so, you know, and he speaks really good English. And so we're going to hire John when, when really and truly both of you could have yeah. either equal credentials or, you know, you could be the better candidate. Yeah. Right. So it does happen. And people, as I said, these conversations are now occurring more frequently. And so people are coming to grips with the fact that they also play a role in this type of behavior. It's very very interesting. But the the interesting thing is you never never give up. Even you you set up the new initiative that like uh set up the crowdfund and also some some support from the the NGO that support women in STEM to go to Antarctic. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what is your your point to go to Antarctic? <laughs> so listen, just like we said, STEM is white, right? Okay. So we need to start diversifying these crowds, these spaces. And my objective with Homeward Bound and going to Antarctica is to just show proof to myself and prove to others that might look like me or have had experiences like me that you can do it. You know, it's not easy and you'll have to face a lot of difficulties, um, but it's possible. And I also want to become, because Homeward Bound first and foremost is a leadership program and so we're they're equipping us with, with the skills to be better leaders and i think that yes because you know opportunities are harder for people from developing countries people of color i need to step up my game and i need to be the best leader i can be so that i can then be in the same room with some of these decision makers and speak up on behalf of those that look like me or you know those that have shared experiences with me so that's why I want to go to Antarctica. <laughs> yeah, let's support Danny to Antarctica. Yes, I'm, I will leave the um, campaign uh, link in the comments on the Facebook. Oh, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for bringing that up. So, uh, so it's almost in, in the end of the 30 minutes, as I promised to Danny. Um, so <laughs> we can go 31. Last... I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> So the last the last uh, request is what is your special message for, for the society in global probably or even from Indonesians? Yeah, like so, we are in the same tropical country, so we are, we are really an archipelagic country as well. I would say, um, you know, the power is in the people. That's my message. So don't accept the fact that people might be making decisions on your behalf that you don't necessarily believe in don't um, be complacent or complicit educate yourself um, participate in causes that you believe in um, because you have more power than you recognize and you might be the person that 
you know, breaks the mold or breaks the wheel or changes things. Mm -hmm. um, and that might be a small thing because you might inspire somebody who is looking at you, or it might be a big thing because you make a change in an institution mm -hmm. or an organization or a process. So the power is in the people. Yeah. Educate oh, yourself. Yes. Thank you, Danny. Next, the world business is power is in the people. So it's really on you guys. So you have the power to change your world as well. So thank you, Denny, for for your for for time you sharing your amazing story and good luck with your campaigns and hope you can uh, inspire for. Oh, Andika, you're gone again. <laughs> well, thank you for having me, and um, I, I really appreciate having the opportunity to share my story with so many people across the world, um, and I hope we can talk again. Um, and just in case anybody is hearing me, I think goodbye is Sampai Jumpa. And if I'm wrong, then you can ignore that 100%. Um, I'm, is that Andika coming back? Yeah. <laughs> again. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. <laughs> At least I got your, your important message. Like, yeah. Uh, power in the people. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Uh, and see you around and good luck with your campaigns. Thank you so much for having me, Andika. And is it Sampai Jumpa? Is that goodbye? Yes, Sampai Jumpa, Danny. <laughs> Bye. Jumpa. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, uh, terima kasih, teman-teman yang sudah uh, tetap setia mengikuti walaupun beberapa masih putus nyambung tadi sinyalnya. Uh, wah, makasih Mas Yogi. Uh, udah, udah mantang terus. Teman-teman, uh, uh, insya Allah nanti kayaknya saya nggak sanggup uh, bagikannya setiap minggu. Nanti mungkin uh, akan coba di manage mungkin dua minggu sekali atau satu bulan sekali. Uh, karena ternyata jadi uh, membuat event seperti ini sangat berat. Ternyata. Dan membutuhkan uh, uh, konsentrasi yang tinggi. Jadi salut buat Begin untuk Bang Begin untuk melanjutkan inisiatifnya. Semangat Bang Begin. Uh, terima kasih buat teman-teman semuanya, tapi jangan lupa untuk uh, tetap uh, apa namanya membagikan cerita-cerita uh, menarik teman-teman dan kami insya Allah siap mendengarkan. Uh, kurang lebihnya uh, kami mohon maaf. Uh, Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.